Today we are going to discuss a very important uh, hypoglycemic agent, anti-diabetic agent that is glucagon GLP-1 receptor agonist or glucagon-like peptide 1 receptor agonist. So glucagon-like peptide 1, what is it? It is an incretin. Incretins are released from the gut in response to the glucose. So what does an incretin does? So this is the action. Whenever we intake the food, uh, the food goes to the intestine and in response to the food, they releases incretins. Example of important incretins are GLP-1 and GIP. Okay. The GLP-1 and GIP, they act on the pancreas and uh, they stimulate the release of insulin while they inhibit the release of glucagon. So insulin kya karega? It will increase the glucose uptake by the peripheral tissues and thereby decrease the blood glucose. Glucagon will decrease the hepatic glucose production and decrease the blood glucose. Okay. So we, uh, we have seen that ultimately blood glucose level will be decreased. Insulin se peripheral tissue uptake kar lenge aur glucagon ke wajay se hepatic uh, glucose production nahi hoga, gluconeogenesis ya glycogenolysis nahi hoga. So ultimately glucose level will reduce. Now the problem is GLP-1 and GIP, these are active, but these are converted into inactivated form by an enzyme dipeptidyl peptidase 4. Okay, and that is why the action of these, uh, uh, these peptides are very short very short acting peptides okay so now let us uh, see the elaborate mechanism uh, let us see if this is a beta cell and these are the incretin receptors okay now uh, whenever the glp gip or glp1 molecule act on these incretin receptors uh, which is a g protein coupled receptor so it will activate the adenylyl cyclase enzyme which will convert atp into cyclic amp and cyclic amp will stimulate the insulin exocytosis okay so cyclic amp will promote the insulin exocytosis okay so uh, glp1 or gip is causing insulin exocytosis uh, the glp or gip1 molecule are rapidly degraded into inactive peptide by the dpp4 enzyme so we can give dpp4 inhibitors like cetagliptin and vildagliptin okay now let us see the mechanism of action. So we have already seen it induces insulin release from the beta cell and uh, to point to note is that it induces insulin release at high glucose concentration. Second thing also we have seen it decreases the glucagon level. Then GLP-1 receptors in the gut if they act on those receptors it slows the gastric emptying and it suppresses the appetite as well. Another important act action is it promote the beta cell help, uh, health by preventing the apoptosis of beta cells. Okay. Now glp1 molecule it is itself is not used why because rapid degradation by the enzyme dipeptidyl peptidase 4 dpp4 which is expressed on the luminal membrane of lot of things like endothelial cells kidney gut liver or immune cells okay so we are not using glp1 but we are using some exogenous formulations of glp1 like exenatide and liraglutide okay and this is what i have shown you in the diagram Exenatide and liraglutide, they act on the incretin receptors, G protein coupled receptor, activate adenyl cyclase, cyclic AMP, and then ex insulin exocytosis. Okay. So, these exenatide and liraglutide, these are resistant to the DPP4 enzyme. Therefore, these are longer acting versions. Once or twice a day dosage is there. Now, the problem with it is it is not effective orally. You have to give it by subcutaneous injection. That is why it is not uh, very much preferred. And on the weight, uh, what is the uh, action on the weight? Uh, it is, it promotes weight loss. Okay. Now the major side effects. It causes intense nausea, pancreatitis, increases the risk of medullary carcinoma of thyroid and also hypoglycemia. And these are rare side effects though. So these are the side effects. Now coming on to the therapeutic status, we have all, uh, as per the American Diabetes Association, uh, these are second line uh, drugs in diabetes management. Whether the patient has atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease or CKD or whether they do not have it. Still, it is a second line drug. Why? Because in the cardiovascular outcome trials, we have seen that they decreases the incidence, they decreases the cardiovascular mortalities and uh, uh, the adverse, uh, the major ad, uh, adverse cardiovascular event, they decreases the maze, major adverse cardiovascular events. So that is why now they are used as a second line agent in uh, whether the patient has atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease or CKD or whether they, if even if they do not have it. So this is all about.